Good morning, hippos. Nice to see you again. For the next two weeks, we are going to talk about fairy tales. Fairy tales are books that are make-believe. They're made up. They're fun to read. For example, here is a fairy tale book. This is called The Three Little Pigs. Now, in this book, these pigs build houses made of straw and sticks and bricks. Do real pigs build houses like that? No, this is make-believe, and we call that fiction. All right, another example of a make-believe book is Goldilocks and the Three Bears. It's make-believe because bears don't really have beds like we do. They don't sit in chairs like we do. This is make-believe. Now, another type of book, books are called fiction or nonfiction, and these books are true stories. So, for example, this book about tigers, when you open it up, it shows pictures of tigers and it gives you facts about tigers. Those are true books, nonfiction books. Here's another one. This is about giraffes, and this is a true story that tells about the giraffe. Another nonfiction true book is this book about volcanoes. These are things that really happen, and they give us facts. So today, we're going to read a fairy tale called Jack and the Beanstalk. Now, this is a fairy tale because it really cannot happen. All right, there's no giant. There's no tall beanstalk. But it's a lot of fun to read about these books and imagine. So this book is by Mara Alperin. Alper Jack and the Beanstalk. All right, make sure you guys can see that. There we go. Deep in the countryside lived a widow and her son, Jack. Their cottage was crumbling, and their clothes were patched, and they were very, very poor. One day, Jack's mother said, we must sell our cow. Take her to the market, Jack, and bring home some gold pieces. And so he set off to the town. And poor in this story means that they did not have a lot of money and they needed some money for food. So that's why he was going to take the cow and get some money for it. But before Jack had gotten very far, he met a strange little man. That's a fine cow, the man said. I'll swap you five magic beans for her. Magic beans, said Jack. Are they really magic? Magic they are. Or chop off my beard and knit it into a sweater, croaked the little man. Wow, magic beans. Jack couldn't wait to tell his mother. He clutched them tightly and ran all the way home. Mm. Uh-oh, look at Jack's mom. What do you think she's feeling? Jack's mother was furious. And the word furious is another word for mad or angry. We need money. Not useless old beans, she said, and she threw them out the window in disgust. Oh, look what happened. But late that night, a tiny bean sprout poked out from the ground, and it grew, and it grew, and it grew. Look at how big it is. The next morning, the beanstalk stretched high into the sky. The beans were magic, Jack cried, but what's at the top, he wondered. So Jack climbed up, 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 up the beanstalk. There he goes. At last, he reached the very top. There, shimmering in the sunlight, was a castle. Look at that castle. Just then, Jack's stomach rumbled. I must find some breakfast, he thought, and he tapped on the castle door. Mm, tap, tap, tap. The door creaked open. And a huge giantress smiled down. Hello, Jack shouted out. Please, do you have any food? You poor thing, she said. Come right in, but quickly, before the giant gets up. Mm -hmm. What a marvelous feast. There was an enormous loaf of bread and a gigantic jar of jelly. Jack dug in at once. Oh, mm. But suddenly, the room began to shake. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, my goodness, cried the giantess. He's coming. 
and she shoved Jack under a teacup to hide. Into the room stomped a big, scary, hungry giant. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman, he said. Be alive or be he dead. I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Don't be silly. There's nobody here but us, the giantess scolded. Now go and wash before breakfast. Look at that giant. Jack trembled. I must leave now, he thought. He was halfway down the hall when he heard, Squawk! It was a hen with bright golden feathers. Help, she clucked. Set me free and I'll lay you golden eggs every morning. Jack scooped up the hen, but then he heard huge footsteps thundering after them. Here we go. Fee, fi, fo, fum, roared the giant. I smell the blood of an Englishman, and there he is. Jack raced out the door, and he jumped and slid down the beanstalk. Down, 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 all the way back to his cottage. Mother, quick, bring the axe, he shouted. Jack's mother swung the axe at the beanstalk. Whack! It shuddered and shook, and then the giant came rumbling, tumbling down. Fee, fi, fo, crash. Look at his feet. And that was the end of the giant. Jack hugged his mother tight. Look what I found, he said, and he showed her the golden egg. There's that, there's that hen. Oh, Jack, said his mother, I'm so glad you're safe. And you were right about those magic beans. So Jack and his mother and the golden hen all lived happily ever after. And with lots of golden eggs, they were never poor again. The end. Wow, look at those magic beans. Oh my goodness. Did you like that story? Was that a true story or was it a make-believe story? How do you think Jack's mom felt when he brought home those five beans? Hmm. What did his mom do with those beans? And when Jack climbed that beanstalk, what did he see? Ooh, and what? Why was Jack scared of that giant? What did Jack's mom do to the beanstalk? And what did Jack bring from the golden hen that made them not poor again? All right, hippos, it was nice to read the story with you. Next time we'll have another fairy tale story. Till then, bye-bye and have a great day.